Time is the dimension along which our own individual experiences are laid out. Uh, he described that by calling it the form of inner sense. And for reasons that aren't all to do with his views of time, he came to the conclusion that time, like space, isn't really, so to speak, out there in the world at all. It's a way in which we experience everything in the world. We, but if you ask what's out there in the world, independent of our thinking of it and experiencing it, then there's no time there, there's no space. Uh, space and time are ways in which we think about the world, not ways in which the world really is. But does that mean that there really isn't any time? It's just the way we think about the world? Scientific theories of time seem to be very, give us a very different picture from the, from the usual, or usual way of looking at time. What does science tell us about time? Until the 20th century, the dominant view of time was embedded in the mechanics of Isaac Newton. Newton was seeking to lay down the laws that would govern the motions of all bodies. Newton's theory of absolute time is the idea that you think of time as something that could exist even if there wasn't anything in it. So that um, you think of it in a way as a sort of container, a series of locations in which there may or may not be something. Newton's physical theories, which concerned the movement of bodies and their effects on one another, presupposed an absolute space, an infinite empty void in which objects from pebbles to planets would take their places, moving and interacting among each other. Time was like an endless line, stretching from the infinite past to the infinite future. Events happened according to whatever standard of temporal measurement we wish to apply. He wrote, Absolute space in its own nature, without relation to anything external, remains always similar and immovable. Newton used certain a priori ideas about time, namely that time is a one-dimensional, as it were, line, and that when an object moves in space, its positions at any given moment are correlated with the flow of time, which is flowing along in one dimension. And so Newton's mathematical theory of motion has two components, space, geometry, and time as the independent variable with respect to which things change their position in space and thereby move. So both space and time are a priori forms within which all our experience happens. But in the 20th century, a radically different concept of time emerged. Time is a very mysterious thing. Uh, we have learned a good deal about time in the last 100 years. Most of what we've learned has come from physics, and most of that came from Albert Einstein. Uh, the special theory of relativity and the general theory of relativity taught us something that no one would have suspected. Uh, before Einstein, taught us that space and time aren't fundamentally different things. Uh, in Einstein's special theory of relativity that was developed in 1905, this was his first theory of relativity, Einstein came up with the idea that both space and time were relative to the observer, or the state of motion of the observer. So that if you and I are moving relative to each other, especially if I'm moving very fast relative to you, almost the speed of light, we will actually have different times and different spaces associated with us. I think um, uh, one of the most surprising and startling things uh, that Einstein's uh, theory brings into our understanding of time is that it negates our whole notion that what is happening now, right now in this room, uh, is the same now as what is happening across the Earth in China, in other planets, across the whole universe, as if there's this whole single one time, the absolute now, that is connecting the whole universe together. And that this now divides off the absolute past of the future from the absolute future. And the, uh, this absolute now, is on, on Newton's view, is something 
that is, is constantly moving forwards into the future, like kind of an absolute tide of becoming, if I look at it that way. Well, Einstein said, no, that, that's simply not true at all. What Einstein's theory seemed to tell us was that time is not absolute and universal. It can be changed by motion. Each observer carries around his own personal scale of time, and it does not absolutely agree with anybody else's. And, and uh, the way to resolve the paradox is, is to uh, realize that the way you count time in Einstein's theory is very different from the way it was counted in Newton's theory. And the, the key to the idea of time in, in Einstein's theory is, is just two simple things. One, there's no absolute space. The second one is that the speed of light is all of us proceed to be going at the same velocity by anybody, regardless of your source or motion away from that speed of light. But not all agree that relativity dismisses absolute time, just the way we measure time. And therefore, it seems to me that Newton was absolutely right. We must make a differentiation between time itself and our measures of time. And what is studied in modern physics uh, and in general philosophy of time are the measures of time rather than time itself. If Newton were presented by Einsteinian relativistic evidence, he would have felt no threat at all to his doctrine of time. Newton would have correctly said, what you're describing has nothing to do with absolute time itself. It only has to do with our physical measures of time. What Newton did not realize and could not have realized is that our physical measures of time are relativistic. Moving clocks run slow. He had no way of knowing that. But presented with the Einsteinian relativistic evidence, Newton would have been very happy to have incorporated that into his doctrine of physical time or relative time. But it wouldn't have had any impact whatsoever upon his doctrine of absolute time. But it does seem that the way we measure time has been profoundly altered by 20th century physics. Time distortions are a mainstay of science fiction writing, but there is nothing fictional about it. Time warps could occur. Consider the so-called twins effect. One brother blasts off to a nearby star, approaching the speed of light. The other twin remains on Earth. Ten years later, the rocket returns to Earth. The Earth-bound twin finds his brother has aged only one year to his ten. The high speed of his rocket means he has experienced only one year of time during which ten years have passed on Earth. What it means is that our conception of time has changed. Before, time was best described as absolute, fixed and universal, independent of material bodies or observers. That means there is no universal present moment. We typically think of the present as existing, with the past gone but remembered, and the future as yet to be. But the theory of relativity is telling us something different. Science doesn't deny that for each of us there is an ordered sequence of events with a definite before-after relationship but it does deny the existence of the past, the present, and the future. 